Have you ever seen someone who shortly after joining Freemasonry goes all in, eats and breathes Freemasonry with such a fury that you think nothing else matters in the world to them? If the Masonic journey was a race, they would be going against all prudent advice from experts. Make sure to take care of your body. Pace yourself. Don't ignore the signs of wear and tear, etc. Is Freemasonry good? Of course it is. Could it turn into something bad for you if you put it above all other things? I think you know the answer to that. Stay with me because I will share with you some real life examples and some tips to help you avoid Masonic burnout on this episode of The Winding Stairs. You have arrived at The Winding Stairs, a program dedicated to Masonic education and the art of self-improvement. I'm your host, Juan Sepulveda. I thank you for spending some time with me exploring how to avoid Masonic burnout. Why is it important to avoid Masonic burnout? And to recognize the signs of it before it's too late. Before we get into the details, I want to say thank you to our exclusive group of supporters on Patreon. They help us make possible these episodes. Details on them later. Masonry is good for you and the people that come in contact with you. Your brothers and your family need you. What do you think your lodge needs most? Someone who goes full throttle the first two years of their membership and then disappears? Or do you think that a brother that is consistently there, being a team player for the long term, is a better asset for your lodge? I'm gonna share with you some archetypes that I have seen in masonry. These are specific types of brothers or their behavior that you can learn from. Hint, uh, one of those may be me. First, let's talk about the sprinter. This is someone who right when the whistle blows, they just sprint out. You think they're competing to earn some sort of award for who can get the most degrees in the shortest amount of time. This is the same brother that actually goes on signing on for all the events, signs up for all the volunteer uh, organizations, all the pendant bodies, and you feel like, okay, pace yourself, calm down, <laughs> take it easy. My advice for this brother, of course, we admire your dedication, your zeal, your enthusiasm for the craft, but remember to pace yourself. Take the time to enjoy the process. Savor the moment. Be able to enjoy the view. If you think about it, every single degree has something beautiful for you to admire, has something insightful for you to discover, and it has something inspiring for you to move towards. If you're rushing through the degrees, if you are just absolutely blowing through all the possibilities, you may miss some of these beautiful things that you're entitled to enjoy as a Mason. The other archetype is the joiner. Some people describe it as the deuce card collector. And this is someone whose main focus in their Masonic journey is to sign as many petitions as possible. Now, appendant bodies serve a purpose. They're important to the craft. They have additional information to convey to you to help you in your journey as a Mason. If you think of the value that the first three degrees in Masonry give you, where you're an entered apprentice, a fellow craft, and a master Mason, and each one of those degrees has lessons for your life. Every subsequent degree under each one of the appendant bodies has even more lessons to share with you, help you grow as an individual. Now, if your focus is just to get that deuce card, just to be able to say, oh, I belong to this body and I belong to this body and I belong to the other without necessarily spending the time learning the lessons, being introspective and figuring out how can I apply these lessons into my life and really showing that you've become a different person, an evolved individual by implementing these things, you'd be missing out. So that entire approach of just joining every single body may be detrimental to your journey as a Mason. After all, you don't have to join every single appendant body. It's okay for you to use the secret word 
of a master mason. No. That is the the lost word <laughs> seems to be no, because no one seems to be able to say no to uh, any new opportunities. Remember, joining appendant bodies is important. We want you to be part of these appendant bodies, but not at the expense of the stability of your Blue Lodge. If your Blue Lodge needs you, if your home lodge needs the, the skills that you have as an individual, if you could serve the craft by being perhaps in the officer line or perhaps being involved in different committees in your Blue Lodge, Joining other bodies prematurely may jeopardize your ability to contribute to that, to that lodge. Also, the lessons that are contained within those degrees, you need to apply. You need to learn, apply, and there are new brothers coming in that perhaps could use your instruction and mentorship. The third archetype is the juggler. You have way too many balls in the air. Take it easy. <laughs> you know, business and family come first before masonry. You need to have the stability of whatever income in your profession and the, the foundation that your family can offer you. So putting these things in a lower tier of importance in your life is a mistake. I have personally seen examples of brothers that put the fraternity before their family and their marriages becomes affected. There are brothers that have lost their marriage because they've given priority to the fraternity. Obviously, that's not what we want. We want you to be there. We want you involved, but we want it with the support of your family. We want your family to have a positive opinion of what masonry can contribute to your life. They can see this. And one way that they can see this is by them becoming part of the Masonic family themselves. Whenever there's an event where your wife is invited and the children are invited, bring them over. Allow them to get to know your brothers, to know other wives, to know other children that are part of the fraternity. Expanding this, uh, this nucleus will help you not just have a better experience with your family and masonry, but it would avoid pinning them against each other. And instead, they're both cooperating to bring you to your highest evolved self. Another pitfall of being the juggler is that if you don't have a good equilibrium within all the things that you are involved in, you're practically neglecting them all. You're not giving all of them your best. You're giving them a fraction of what you could do. Whereas if you were more focused or more intentional with the bodies that you belong to, the events that you get involved in, then you're able to be of better service to those groups and events because you're not stretched. You're not stretched too thin. You're able to provide some valuable input and effort into every single thing that you're involved in. If you're enjoying this episode, you will love our newly redesigned website, thewindingstairs.com, where you will find free access to our entire podcast catalog, by visiting thewindingstairs.com, you will also discover our growing collection of Freemasonry-inspired art. That's right. Bring elegant artwork featuring the profound symbols of masonry to your home, office, or lodge. You'll be happy to know that we've also expanded our apparel collection to include new, discreet designs in sizes up to 5XL. We can't wait for you to see them. Support our efforts to share Masonic education and inspiration by visiting thewindingstairs.com today. Thank you. The fourth archetype that I have identified of brothers that tend to end up being experiencing burnout, we have the disappointed Mason. It is important to know that you will find discrepancies between what you expect from Masonry before you join and what you encounter once you are within the fraternity. Among the disappointment that some people find is that they go to lodge meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting, but the amount of value they're getting from the meetings, besides the fellowship, I'm talking about like the Masonic education or the uh, studying the implementation of the lessons of Masonry, if they don't find that within the meetings, the burnout comes from being disappointed that they didn't find the instruction or the mentorship that they expected when they joined the craft. 
The disappointed Mason may also evolve as a result of encountering people that are overzealous or people that are too grumpy or mean-spirited. There are people that don't have a good way to communicate with people. They don't have tact. They don't have that kind of charisma that, that draws you into someone else. My advice whenever you encounter this kind of disappointment is to try to find the good within the brothers that you're encountering. They may not be great communicators. They may not be great uh, motivators, but there may be something that they're very good at that you can learn from. Let's say, for example, they are very well versed in the history of your lodge. Perhaps try to interact with those brothers from that category in order for you to derive the, the benefit of learning more about your lodge, but also you're helping them feel like they're contributing to the lodge. They feel like their presence there is of value to the rest of the brethren. Remember, brothers that are grumpy, that are mean-spirited, or that are just not to your liking, they're still part of the fraternity, but they're not a reflection of the spirit of masonry. So in your prudent ways, you need to avoid conflict at all, uh, at all costs, right? You need to avoid the conflict, whether it's that you spend less time with them or you approach them in a very different way. Tailor your communication to them so that you're not maybe unnecessarily ruffling their feathers and, and challenging them, but instead see how you can harmoniously work together. See how you can best work and best agree. Next, I'll be sharing with you some tips or ways to identify that you may be reaching a state of burnout. How do you identify that and how do you avoid it? But first, if you are enjoying this content, let me ask you to please subscribe and share this with someone that you think is going to get value out of this kind of conversations. Thank you. One sign that you may be reaching a level of burnout within the fraternity is that your responsibilities and commitments to the craft may start feeling like a burden. You see, we are very fortunate to be members of this fraternity, that we get to do these things. Now, the attitude should be, ooh, I get to do this. I'm excited to do it. Whenever your reaction, whenever your gut reaction feels like, oh my God, I have to do this, then perhaps it's time for you to consider whether you're stretching yourself too thin. Do you have many, too many things in your plate? Are you committing to more things that you can realistically deliver in a positive way? Remember, even when you're doing the hard work uh, for the lodge, even when you're doing things that may be strenuous, difficult, you should still feel some sort of pride and enjoyment in doing it. If you've lost that feeling, perhaps it's important that you look at your commitments, look at everything, and evaluate whether you are being prudent with the use of your time and your allocation of your energy into the fraternity and the other responsibilities of your life. If you have lost the interest in learning more about Freemasonry, if you're just not, you don't feel it, that may be another sign that you may be reaching burnout. Another one, if your family is showing signs of resistance or perhaps disapproval with the time that you're spending in Lodge, maybe they're not excited that you have to go to another meeting. It's like, oh my God, three meetings this week? Those are signs that perhaps something is off balance. And while you may not be able to do anything at the moment and break commitments that you've already made, it's important that you keep it in the forefront of your mind that perhaps you have to make sure that the balance is in harmony with your family. Like I mentioned earlier, we're very fortunate to be members of this great and honorable fraternity. It would be a shame if our mismanagement of our involvement in it jeopardizes some of the things that we have in our lives, like a harmonious family or a stable career. We need to make sure that we have everything in balance so that we can enjoy the process, we can learn as much as we can from this beautiful fraternity and implement those lessons into our life so that we could be of greater impact to our home, to our community, and ideally to society as a whole. Remember also to pace yourself and enjoy every moment that you experience in the fraternity. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments section. Have you ever felt like you have reached a point of burnout? Have you seen some of the signs that I mentioned earlier? Please let me know 
how you dealt with it, if you were able to avoid reaching a level of burnout, or even if you actually felt that you were fully in a Masonic burnout state, did you get out of it? How did you do it? I'd love to hear your comments in the section below. If you enjoy this content, please take a minute to visit our newly redesigned website. We've done everything possible to make sure that you have easy access to all the episodes of The Winding Stairs. We are 65 episodes in. You can reach each and every one of those through our website. We have also expanded our selection of Masonic art, Masonic apparel. I think they're amazing, but I'll let you be the judge. Make sure to support our show by visiting thewindingstairs.com. Another way that you can support this show is by sharing this with other people through your social media accounts or your blog. Share this with brothers in your lodge that could benefit from avoiding reaching a level of burnout. And as I mentioned earlier in the show, my deepest gratitude to our supporters on Patreon. This is an exclusive group of people who support the efforts that we do here on The Winding Stairs and in my other channel, The Gentleman's Brotherhood. Through their support, they help us provide good quality content that's gonna make an impact on the people that listen. As a reward for being one of our supporters, you get early access to some of our episodes, you get some behind the scenes footage as to how we do all this. Details to all of that by visiting patreon.com slash Juan Sepulveda. As always, I thank you for spending this time with me and I hope that you found this episode edifying. So join me in living a balanced life and avoid Masonic burnout. Until next time, may your steps be firm and your path illuminated as we continue our journey up the winding stairs.